So now let us quickly discuss the, uh, the codal provisions from ASC 7-16, what code says about RSA. So now you practically know the, the overall procedure of RSA procedure, but uh, let us see how code explain that. Obviously, just like, SR, uh, just like ELF procedure, code cannot explain the mathematical formulation of RSA. It is well established. So, code does not provide all that expressions to calculate the equivalent static force for each mode and uh, all those provisions. It is already well established. So, code only guides us about few things. How to consider orthogonal loading effect, how many number of modes should be considered in the analysis and some other guidelines. right? So, the theory is a unified theory already established. So, it is not repeated in the in the building code. Because you know ELF empirical formula keeps on improving with a new code. RSA is not empirical, it is classical method, right? The formula to calculate equivalent static forces is classical formula and it does not require any empirical tuning which can be improved with a new version of building code, right? So, for all such established mathematical closed form methods, code does not provide the mathematical formulation. It simply guides uh, that how you have to apply or what provisions you have to follow. right? So, RSA is exactly same thing. So, first guideline is about number of modes. Ideally, you should consider all modes, any mode which can have any participation of mass. Uh, should be included in the analysis, but code also provide you a threshold that uh, the minimum number number of modes uh, should be considered to obtain a combined modal mass participation of at least 90 percent of the actual mass. Right? So, if first mode is participating 60 percent, sec uh, second mode is participating 30 percent and third mode is participating let us say 1 or 2 percent. So, first three modes will fulfill your this requirement. right? So, E tabs provide you the cumulative modal mass uh, up till any certain number of modes. So, you can directly see from the modal analysis results that how many modes will fulfill this requirement. And in the uh, in the modal uh, in the RSA load case, you can give only those number of modes. right? By default, I think there is 20 modes in the program or some number of modes, you can modify that. Right. Second thing is about the application of R factor, I factor and C D factor. Just like ELF, uh, they will be applied, right? but in E tabs particularly, it does not apply automatically. You have to apply it through the scale factor while applying the load case or you can apply it manually on the responses after you run the analysis. Right. So, uh, I will not read out all that provision. It simply says that apply R factor R over E i should be divided, each quantity should be divided by R over E i and then only displacement and drift should be multiplied by C d. Right. Then uh, combined response parameters again you have an option S R S S C Q C and there is an improved C Q C method also. Uh, it is called CQC4, right? So please refer to ASC4 uh, to get the details of that. There was a time when there was extensive research on these modal combination rules also, right? So please check other than uh, the SRSS also. Then scaling uh, design values of combined response. The idea is that ELF procedure should be used as the minimum design forces. If the RSA is giving you a force design force less than ELF, you amplify RSA uh, forces to make it at least equal to ELF. Right? So, uh, you should calculate this ratio after you perform RSA and that ratio is V over V t. V is coming from RSA and V t is coming actually sorry V t is coming from uh, uh, RSA denominator and ELF base shear should be in the numerator. right? If, there, if this ratio is greater than 1, 
which means your elf is uh, is giving you more base shear compared to rs right so one practical thing that uh, even if you are performing rsa you you must perform elf also just for this comparison right so let's assume that your rsa is already providing you higher base shear compared to elf then no need to modify it but if it is providing you base shear which is less than elf then this number will be more than 1 let's say it is 1.2 then you have to rerun rsa by multiplying all your forces with 1.2 so that your response level is at least matching with what you would have get from the elf uh, base shear right but obviously by applying this 1.2 factor to your rsa results uh, the the response quantities in individual elements will not exactly match with elf because the force distribution along the height is different in elf and rsa right only the base shear is being matched the force distribution is still different so you will still get different responses actually more realistic responses in rsa compared to elf right and then some other provisions about p delta should be included and again p the decision about whether p delta should be included or not it requires the application of elf right so even if you want to design on rsa you still have to run elf for many things ssi if you want to consider go to chapter 19 structural model should comply with these requirements please read that out actually it says that you should not use a 2d model uh, you should use a three dimensional representation of your structure so uh, let's end this discussion about rsa procedure here and uh, i'll quickly explain in next session maybe 15 20 minutes on lthha and then we go to the non linear modeling uh, lthha obviously is again not explained in detail in the building code because it is a well established method already so it has a classical mathematical theory so therefore no empirical factors or tuning required so it is simply guided with some uh, provisions about linear time history analysis so we will go directly to those provisions in asc 7 and then conclude that discussion about code based uh, analysis procedures right